The next session is what is this fuss about Pan India? This term we've heard of late quite a lot. And uh, I'm sure we, we will uh, want to know about this. And to moderate this session, I would like to call upon none other than uh, Mr. Anjum Rajabali, not just to introduce the session, but the panelists also. <laughs> about Anjum, sir, I would just say he's a veteran screenwriter, writer of Drokal, Gulam, the legend of Bhagat Singh, among many others, a teacher to his students, and a man who has, a hu as a human being, kept our curiosity alive. Thank you. Good afternoon. So, yeah, we're back here. Now, this is actually the last uh, discussion which is to happen uh, at this conference. And uh, as it happens, it is the most difficult session, So, which is why these people have, in a very cruel way, dumped it on me. Okay, then let's see how you moderate this one now. Let us see. <laughs> so, the question is, in fact, rather tricky because it's very easy to ask for pan-Indian, pan-Indian stories, pan-Indian cinema, and yet, given the enormous diversity of this country, given the way in which the cultural situation and the other aspects of Indian society and the country are evolving at this rapid pace, you heard even the veterans before this session complaining, in fact, that it's very difficult to keep pace because literally with every sort of five years, there is a sea change which is coming about. So in a situation like this, combined with the fact that Hindi cinema, for a very long time, too long a time, considered itself as the Indian cinema because their films, their stars were considered national films and national stars. So this is a privilege which has been enjoyed, as I said, for too long. And we seem to have lost that position because attempt after attempt seems to be going absolutely nowhere, let's face it. On the other hand, that cinema which has been termed quite unfortunately in a very casual way as regional cinema. I don't understand how it can be called regional cinema because Hindi itself is regional cinema. It's not the national language as we all know. There are 22 national languages in this country and 19,500 other languages. So given this, I don't think we have any right to claim that any of these languages, cultures, or cinema are actually national cinema. Nevertheless, as you will hear from these experienced and knowledgeable practitioners, that the demand for so-called pan-Indian films seems to be relentless right now, more so, more desperate than earlier. So we have absolutely the most appropriate panel possible to at least address this issue. My only uh, caution to you people is that do not sit there expecting that some pat answers or some pat uh, insights or formula is going to emerge from this because that is not our intention at all. Our intention is to discuss it and at best articulate the questions that we have been facing, the challenges that we've been facing in the attempt to a a appeal to the largest audience possible. Now, to get that going, uh, let me bring up the panelists one by one. First, I am calling upon Mr. Abhijit Deshpande, who is a writer who's primarily written films in Marathi language. He is an ex-student of FTII, uh, passed out in 2005. And most students, when they pass out, Pushkar, they struggle. They take, we tell them it'll take you maybe two years, three years, four years. Some people have taken 10 years to get their first break in feature films. Abhijit Deshpande, within a matter of months, less than a year, was already doing his first film. In the next year, the second one, within the span of 10 years, he wrote 11 films. And then he <laughs> went on. Yeah, I mean, it is true. It's quite sensational. And then he went on to direct a film called Ani Kashinath Ghanekar, which was a biopic based on a very popular Marathi actor, stage and film actor, uh, Dr. Kashinath Ghanekar. And uh, it became a huge hit. So spurred by that, he made another film which has just been released called Har Har Mahadev. 
it's also making news and waves for all the wrong reasons because it has incited some kind of unwanted provocation, but we will not delve into that. Let me, without further ado, invite Abhijit Deshpande. accept that. Okay, next <laughs> calling upon that duo which all of us were wondering, including Satyanshu Singh, how is it that they work so well as collaborators, writers and directors with a string of notable movies in the Tamil language. And then they made a film called uh, Vikram Veda in Tamil with Madhavan as well as, um, yes, yes, of course which became a major hit as well as a major point of discussion where waves reached here also and they were invited in fact during the previous conference to speak about that and other issues. That's of course Gayatri and Pushkar. So may I please invite Pushkar and Gayatri. The film Vikram Veda was also then made in Hindi as you're aware with Hrithik Roshan and Saif Ali Khan. Then I'm going to call upon that writer from Malayalam cinema, who I think everyone here who has seen his work is a fan of. Certainly everyone within the screenwriting community of Bombay is a fan of his work, exquisite work. Joji, then uh, Maheshinte, Parikaram, Parik, Pratikaram, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Pratikaram, then, of course, Kumbalangi Nights, which took everyone by storm. There you go. So, none other than the hugely talented Mr. Sham Pushkaran, please. surprise guest uh, here whose name is not mentioned in the souvenir because that is not how it was planned and uh, when I had spoken with him to invite him here for another purpose altogether but he was very keen to attend so he took time off from his busy schedule and spending two days with us he was here yesterday too and I requested him that since he represents Telugu cinema that he should also come and join us and as gracious as ever and as ready as ever to fulfill our requests he has agreed. He is a person who is known by another name, and that name is Mr. Baubali. He is the Piast. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I mean, all of us were pretty overwhelmed and taken aback by the enormity of the appeal of the first Baubali as well as the second one. Then, of course, he has followed it up with RRR. He's written the story for that. He also happens to be, I mean, Rajamali, SS Rajamali happens to be his son. So they also work in tandem rather well together. And the son depends on the father to provide that platform based on which Rajamali is able to make his wonderfully appealing pan-Indian cinema. <laughs> okay. So he's the right person to be asked. And he will be asked about this. Before that, of course, there were various other films, including Ega, which is the fly, if you remember, how a person turns into a fly and goes on a revenge spree. So without further ado, I am inviting my close friend and a big supporter of screenwriting causes as well as of SWA, <laughs> Mr. Vijayan Prasad. Prasad, 
would prefer to sit there and uh, look at us. Please, 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 please have a seat. So uh, I had placed an, an extra chair for him. So please try to imagine his reflection in that chair. Okay. But he's also graciously promised to come up on the stage when a question is asked of him. So let me start. Let's see where this goes. Okay. Do not sit there raising your expectations, even though these people deserve for us to have high expect expectations from them. But the topic is going to be a little complex. Okay. Okay, here we go. Abhijit, you have the courage to kick it off? Yeah? Let me ask you the question. First and foremost, let's start with a definition, all of you. What, how is it that you define and characterize pan-Indian cinema? What is pan-Indian cinema? First, just tell me, what does it mean? Uh, thank you for calling me here. Yeah. Hi. Uh, I think... Uh, I think every cinema, like when it started and over the years, aspired to be pan-India. When we talk about pan-India, it's a term that has come now. But uh, I think every filmmaker, when he makes a film, he wants his characters to be relatable to people. He wants the journeys which people can understand, enjoy. He wants his stories to be uh, enjoyed by the largest section of people across uh, genders, across... Uh, castes, across religions, across states, across languages. Uh, this is a new buzzword which has come today because there is a certain fall in the previous system. Uh, if I could sort of go a little back. Please. Uh, I don't know where to start, but uh, like I was saying sometime back when we met that a lot of the problems of the film industry are essentially problems of India. So if you see a phenomenon in the last 10, 15, 20 years, we've uh, become event-based. Ban gai. Event based means what? We are doing event kar rahe. Maybe because we have nothing to, nothing really, really genuine to celebrate. That's why we are making false events. So in 2014, the fall of a corrupt 70-year regime was event in which you participate. Two, three years later, the purpose of the purpose is to black money, ko nikalo, demonetization. You participated in an event where you stood in the lines and burnt your feet. Then uske baad aya jo bhi Kashmir ka ho, Ayodhya ka ho, hum sab events bana rahe, you know, uske. Now ye politically usme mujhe jana nahi hai, but I'm saying about how people are reacting to it. One major event that happened was the pandemic. Abhi pandemic mein hua kya? People, uh, collectively people, we were all part of that thing where we were all at home. We started watching... Uh, films which were not in Hindi, we were watching films uh, from down south, more from Hollywood. Our taste buds were changing. In that case, there was a very unfortunate incident that happened, which was the Sushank Singh Rajput. That now, I know it's a little off the subject. But after that, what happened? If you see the phenomenon that happened after that, across on social media, on discussions on WhatsApp, what started happening? People started Hindi film industry. Ko gali Somewhere, if you look at it at analysis, somewhere it was something which was brewing for the last 15, 20 years, where people felt angry at the fact that you were making us watch films which were mediocre. You were making us come and celebrate stardom which was fake. Suddenly, a wave was made that whatever Hindi is, it is all bad. Bollywood, whatever is bad. And... By the time we had also started watching thode South Indian films, we had started watching uh, 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 Hollywood films. So a perception aisa banne laga that everything that is coming out of here is trash. And the southern stars, the stars from Telugu, from Tamil, they are more grounded. You know, they are more humble. Uh, the writers are more connected. The directors can create a spectacle. What do you, you guys do? You go to the dog, you take a video. You go to the gym, you video. Your stars are the most nepotistic, arrogant sons of guns who only want to sort of uh, uh, exploit this whole market. And they don't want to do good stories. It became a perception. How much is it wrong, how much is it wrong, because if you see even the Telugu industry is again a very family-based sort of a 
यू नो अमंग फोर फाइव दिस थिंग तो ये एक परसेप्शन बनने लगा सो पैन इंडिया जो आप बोल रहे हैं सो द ऑडियंस इज नॉट एबल टू आर्टिकुलेट वॉट एक्जैक्टली इट मीन सो आज जो सोशल मीडिया पर भी जो डिमांड हो रही है हमको पैन इंडिया चाहिए हमको पैन इंडिया चाहिए वो एक्चुअली पैन इंडिया नहीं है वॉट डे वॉन्ट इज एंटी बॉलीवुड वॉन्ट इज एंटी बॉलीवुड इट इज नॉट पैन इंडिया इट इज एंटी बॉलीवुड आई एम नॉट सींग एंटी फिल्म हिंदी फिल्म इंडस्ट्री हिंदी अलग है बट बॉलीवुड ये जो टर्म है ना इट इज अबाउट लार्जली इन द ट्वेंटी ईयर्स किसी को क्रिटिसाइज करना नहीं है बट एन एवरेज हिंदी फिल्म हैज बीन बिलो एवरेज विच वी हैव ऑल सॉर्ट ऑफ एग्रीड अपॉन कॉन्टेंट उतना अच्छा नहीं रहा है वी हैव नॉट बीन एबल टू कनेक्ट टू द लार्जर ऑडियंसिस what people are today talking about pan india as a term they are not able to articulate but it is anti bollywood that sentiment is brewing and i feel this is something which we need to take a cognizance of if we have to move ahead means you made at least three points here <laughs> okay three crowd pleasing points that you have made here as you can see from the response number one you are saying that everybody who makes a film wishes for it to have a national appeal across india by definition of story writers we want our yeah, stories yeah, to yeah. be so that's what you most. said number 2 you said that actually because of the pandemic we got exposed to other cinema and by contrast we started looking at uh, hindi film stars and how arrogant they are and nepotistic they are and as a result of which they the, their cinema got rejected number third you're saying is that the quality of material which actually we are putting out is mediocre and which is not holding an appeal which is why it fails and actually you made a fourth point that when you say that we when we mean when we say pan indian cinema we mean actually that which is not bollywood as you are saying not hindi yes. films is that what you're saying okay sham i'm going to jump to you immediately hum malayalam ki badi didi tamil baat karenge sir pehle there is a point i'm making Yeah, yeah, we all love him, but I still need to ask him that question. <laughs> okay, yeah. Sham, the one point that because I'm going to come to Tamil, then there's a reason why I'm taking them next. Is uh, Abhijit's first premise was that if you're writing a film, we want it to necessarily have a nationwide appeal. Is that what you have in mind when you write? Sir, we have learned that human behavior, human psychology, human love is all around the globe is the same we have to write for the whole global audience rather than abhi pan india abhi nahi naya shuru hua is always we have been hame ye sikhaya gaya ki global likho global likho so i never thought of writing pan india i never thought of and kuch bhi ho whatever i mean they made vikram ved i don't think they aimed it for pan they made it aimed it for tamil audience audience sab jagah ek hi hoti hai human behavior is all the same all over the country when we can connect with the sicilian kid or Uh, when we can connect with Iranian kid, we can also connect with any kid around the globe. <laughs> so I don't really keep that in mind. So, but Rajmouli sir said about he has a definition on Pan India. He is a poster boy. He is ambassador. He is the primary person authoritative to talk about this. I have heard his in the interview. Uh, he said like uh, without subtitles, without dialogues. जो समझ में आए पूरे लोगों को पूरे इंडिया में वो ही असली पैन इंडियन है सो इफ यू आर गोइंग टू पुट ए विशल न्यूएंसेस एंड डायलॉग न्यूएंसेस ऑन ए फिल्म आप थिएटर के बाहर जाओगे सो दिस इज व्हाट आई नो नो एंड ऑफ़ टू काइंड ऑफ पैन इंडियन सिनेमा थिएटरिकल एंड नॉन थियेट्रिकल so i think discussion starts from there actually yeah but uh, right now as it happens sham what is grabbing the film industry as the crisis which they call it is the theatrical one that in terms of theater going public because even today in india at least when somebody is writing a feature film more or less i mean 95% of the people who are writing and making feature films believe that it should appear in theater in its all its grandeur etc so that's what at the moment i am referring to no my point with you was the universality of the human psychology emotions relationships perfect that's how we write human beings are the same everywhere but when your films don't necessarily get a wide release okay outside of kerala or its related regions do you feel a sense of dismay that no i need to write something which actually goes all the way in theaters in say chandigarh or in delhi do you feel a sense of dismay या अच्छा लगता है आपकी फिल्म हर जगह चल जाती है तो 
but it's always there is a pattern like that hollywood narrative is there that hindu mythological uh, super power i mean savior of this uh, myth se ek savior aata hai legend aata hai wo save he saves that uh, that is good that is easy this hamara hamara hamesha this superhero things is there rama ramayana or whichever mythological things we are fond of superhumans and i don't mind anything watching that but i don't think i can write that uh, i'm not able to write that or mera story aise hota hi nahi sir this is my problem this is my problem in fact this is my only problem i understand that i don't mind watching it any other bahubali or anything but i can't write it good and you're okay with that i am okay with that exactly yeah that's all. and you're taking off uh, gayatri from what uh, <coughs> yeah. sham said actually uh, my kind of agree with him see finally uh, see a film like antara yeah it was not uh, started off as i didn't start off as a pan indian film it was actually uh, made for a very local audience local culture kind of thing then uh, somehow it got the fancy then in like i think two weeks time or something they dubbed in all the languages like quickly whatever satellite dubbing they were doing they hurried that and then released it so that was not so i think somewhere if you start with okay i'm going to make it with the largest appeal no then you lose the truth somewhere i mean the, i mean uh, at least it has to appeal to one set of audience and like what is the story you want to say that might actually get diluted so i think uh, like starting off with oh, i'm going to do a pan india thing no? i mean of course like there are people who excel at it but uh, that uh, i'm not sure if it will work every time so i mean and yeah it becomes pan indian like kantara has become pan indian because it appealed to it so but a uh, lot of films have been uh, dubbed in multiple languages and released as uh, you know pan indian films which have actually not really crossed over true so. ushkar uh, again this is we are still listening to uh, a view which is focused which is i'm going to use a sweeping term slightly purist in a good way i'm saying ki bhai ab apna cinema banao apni kahani lo uske hisab se film banao bhaiya jitna appeal karegi utna karegi so you do and yet you tell me one thing because you also the two of you have been involved in big projects i mean vikram veda did i mean even in the tamil i mean it created waves all over people began seeing it and hence the hindi film producers and stars approached you and said ki we would like to sort of do that do you get keep getting demands from either producers studios or actors ki bhai i want a pan indian film make something which will have a national appeal from them do you all the time all the time all the time <laughs> actually in fact uh, that has been literally the only demand uh, which has been coming forth over the past 6 months uh, chalo let's go make a pan indian film which is like still trying to figure out what is it uh, which people would consider as pan indian it's one of those things where uh, you are somebody to define it and nobody will be able to define it but um, okay actually i have an example at this point we come from an advertising background uh, our initial years were in uh, in a production house making ad films and all that so uh, this term pan india was something which was commonly used in advertising uh, pan asian pan, pan asian <laughs> pan indian uh, so this was uh, late 90s early 2000s kinds um, so the model who will be selling a product uh, would be termed as uh, south indian uh, north market central market and all that and then every once in a while the agencies would want to use a pan indian face so aishwarya rai was the most popular pan indian face because uh, she had an appeal which uh, was equally awesome in a bunch of different territories so this term is very common in advertising at that point of time like uh, another product horlix uh, followed a strategy of uh, making ads in hindi tamil telugu kannada malayalam uh, oriya with different faces so the horlix mom i mean we have worked on a couple of horlix ads uh, we have uh, gone to bangalore we have gone to cochin we have gone to hyderabad to find the perfect horlix mom uh, so that's a face which will appeal for that state so that was the uh, the whole marketing idea of horlix as a company saying like no let's not use a pan indian face let's use a face which is hyper local Uh, and these are not stars uh, i'm talking about aishwarya rai before she entered into films uh, this is when uh, she was a model and all that so uh, 
going with this knowledge of what is pan-Indian as such is uh, the only way we can define it is that it appeals to everybody in India, right? Uh, now, if you ask somebody to draw a pan-Indian face, nobody will be able to draw it. But you look at Aishwarya Rai, you'll know this is a pan-Indian face. So with uh, advertising agencies, it was that. Look through uh, thousands of photographs and see which face looked pan-Indian. But you can't define that saying like the eyes have to be like this color and the nose has to be this way. This is where we are stuck. We are trying to make something pan-Indian when we can only recognize what is pan-Indian. Uh, to start off with trying to make something pan-Indian is a very, very difficult process because then um, a, you will have to make it so homogeneous, uh, so, uh, let's say, for want of a better word, I'm going to use the word lowest common denominator. Uh, that, uh, then where is the, the art in it, the craft in it and all that? If you say like, uh, you're going to listen to a hundred distributors from across uh, the country and say, uh, get the feedback on what is the kind of scenes which work over there. What is the scene which works in Chandigarh? What is the scene which works in, uh, uh, in uh, Tirupati? And uh, try to put all this together and then try to make a movie. No, then you're not making movies. Uh, we are doing, we are selling. Uh, so that is where we are getting stuck. So here we have to try to do a creative process into making something which is homogeneous, but still unique. So this uh, demand, we don't have the answer. <laughs> like, how do you do something like that? No, going for the food analogy, it's biryani. There is Talashiri biryani, there's Hyderabadi biryani. Biryani is a pan-Indian dish almost. Yeah, but there are different interpretations that you have. There are plenty of biryanis, but biryani Absolutely. is the one. If there's potato yeah, yeah. and biryani, yeah. it's not biryani. <laughs> no, no, I mean, each one is so loyal to it. I mean, the Calcutta biryani, I mean, they will say this Mughalai is all nonsense. It's, it is biryani, it is yeah. biryani. It, no, no, exactly. Uh, Gayatri, I'm just going to take one thing that he said and then jump to Abhijit. He used the word lowest common denominator that perhaps he's saying, is it that when you appeal, to the lowest common denominator, that there is a chance of it becoming pan-Indian. When you're writing a story, what is lowest common denominator then? Just hypothetically, you yeah. may not be working on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no, I think uh, making it the story very simple. Like, don't add too many layers. I mean, uh, like, uh, uh, and I think somewhere a scale also there needs to be needs to happen. A scale and a simple story with an emotional connect has to be there. I think that, uh, uh, but that is. It's a very difficult thing to crack. I mean, yeah, throw in some action. All those things you can say, but it's not like every one of those films actually work. Uh, so making that is like a huge skill. I mean, uh, like to believe that, okay, this is the story which is going to really appeal to all, uh, all, of, all of India. No? That is a very, this thing, but I think lowest common denominator as in, um, it is very uh, like visceral as in, you see it, you enjoy it you may not go home and think about it. That experience of, and that's why scale also, I guess, comes up. Okay, so it's not very complex, it is uh, simple. Now, as Sham also said, and I'm sure Avijit also will agree, as will the two of you, that essentially every story deals with human feelings. Uh. And when you're creating drama out of those feelings, we're looking at the kind of conflicts, dilemmas, turmoil, etc., which starts, okay? Joji wants to be uh, a successful rich person, but he's being held back right. because of an obdurate father. So he takes certain steps mm -hmm. to do that. Likewise, the four brothers, if you're talking Kumbhalangi Nights, or Vikram Veda's that chase. I'm referring to the Tamil version. So every story actually... actually but the hero, I mean, it's like a hero's story. Yeah. Hero's story. Uh, no, you're saying something different. You're saying journey. So there's a very specific thing that you're referring to, which is hero's journey. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like the hero's journey, as um, uh, we all understand as screenwriters, um, that is a, a template which works exactly into what Gayatri is saying. Um, you have a, a protagonist, you throw a conflict in front, and then keep complicating the conflict, and uh, the, the protagonist uh, wins in the end. I mean, as simple as that. So um, my go-to example for this uh, is this uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger film called uh, Commando, I think. Uh, where um, he gets into a flight, uh, 
he kills the guy next to him, escapes from the flight, and before the flight lands and they discover that he has killed him, he has to sort this problem and rescue uh, somebody. Uh, so his this daughter. is his daughter. Mm. Uh, this was a 90s film, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, uh, somewhere in the mid 90s. So here you have all the ingredients. You have a ticking time bomb, which is by the time this flight lands there, he has to finish all this. You have the emotional connect of uh, the, uh, the hero trying to save uh, his uh, daughter. And uh, you have uh, the obstacles in, uh, in front in terms of uh, people chasing you with guns and trying to kill you. And then you get an AK-47 and I think it was a bigger gun also and shoot everybody down. So it has all the ingredients of uh, the, the most simple form of the hero's journey. Uh, so those kind of films uh, are the ones which can reach the farthest. Uh, now, the key thing here is, since this is the most simple of stories to say, everybody has done it, everybody has seen it. So for you to do a film uh, which is based on a simple plot line actually makes it a lot more difficult. See, when we have complications in plot, when we have reversals and all that, it is actually a little easier to write than to write a simple story. Because simple story, moment by moment, people have seen a million variations of it. What are you going to write which is completely new? That's why we never write love stories. Because uh, we won't know what, what is the new the nuance we can bring is, to, yeah. what is the new the conflict which we can bring to done. a love story. Boy meets girl, boy and girl fights, then they get back together in the end, uh, movie over. What do they fight about? How do they meet? How do we bring in some variation in this? So this is a simple story which will work across all audiences. Boy meets girl, boy and girl fight, and then they get back together. But how do you write this in a way which is, which looks new, which feels new, yet is familiar? That is the the the, the difficulty in writing the uh, the larger story which appeals to <coughs> pan India. Uh, and Actually, Titanic. I mean that that is like yeah, pan world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So once again, I mean, going further by what you people said, that the simplicity, the basic simplicity is there. There's a certain task to be done, a man has to do it, these are the number of obstacles that he faces, how he struggles with them, manages to overcome them, and eventually if it's tragedy, he fails. If it is a success, then he passes. But you also mentioned the way in which we tell it. So your idea is that we tell it in a new way and yet make it familiar. So the base of it is familiar, whereas the presentation could be uh, new, could, could have some um, inventiveness Actually, yeah. to um, it. So here, Pushkar, Big question, because this is what everybody, all of them sitting here, actually want that. That it's relatable meaning that the base is simple. Mm. And yet it is new because that same thing you're presenting in a new way. It is biryani, but it's my variation of the biryani. But they're able to identify it as biryani. Mm. Okay, essential ingredients are the same, the proportion is slightly different. Now, here becomes a big question. That what is this new presentation which might alienate the audience completely, even though the base of the story is very simple. I'll give you one very odd example. You remember Pulp Fiction, yeah. right? Which all the aficionados loved it. Ah, fantastic, fantastic, you know, new stuff. But if you really look at the main story, it happens to be of Jules, Samuel Jackson, that right in the beginning he faces this dilemma. Okay, I'm doing all this crime, etc. whereas Jesus has sent me a message. Remember when he escapes those bullets? has sent me a message, Sham, you remember uh, Pulp Fiction? Yeah. And he said, no, I'm going to give this up. And then there's a struggle which goes on. In the end, he manages to succeed, though even though he's tempted to kill that fellow who's trying to, that honey bunny and all that, right. and trying to take his thing away. But he doesn't do that. In fact, gives him the wallet and say, okay, you take this. And he controls himself. So he's won the moral game. That was it. It was structured in such a way that I'm not so sure that everybody across India necessarily, you know, it appealed to, because it, the structure was so different that it was very difficult for them to necessarily piece it together. But it was essentially based on the hero's journey, with those kind of, I mean, a compressed hero's journey. So this becomes the challenge which I'm going to come back to you too, because you people, at least, to a certain extent, have managed to hit some notes with this formula. Simple, but new, yet familiar. No. Abhijit, I'm going to take this forward. Hero's journey. Now, what is a hero's journey? I mean, those of you who have, are aware of this concept, 
It's essentially a study that uh, Professor Campbell did of mythology. Mythology and ancient tales from across the world he compiled and he discovered that there is a certain pattern. That there is a hero who is living in his ordinary world, gets a challenge, and how he overcomes internal and external obstacles to go on with that, and eventually he manages to succeed it. But in the process, there is a transformation which takes place, that he, he actually, those challenges change him as a person, evolve him as a person. That is essentially it. I mean, you look at any of our mythology, this seems to be the basis of it. So, if you look at mythology as the base of it, now mythology is something which is pan-Indian. Whether it is uh, the Mahabharat, whether it is in Tamil Nadu or Kerala, there may be a, a variations, <coughs> but the classical version of the Mahabharat or the Ramayana okay, is there across India. So is that an insight here? Is that a clue here that these people are referring to that maybe that if you stick to and then make a change in the way in which it is interpreted in terms of form or presentation, maybe that is what is likely to have a very wide appeal because we are familiar with that. See, we were breathing oxygen even before it was called oxygen or if it was discovered to be oxygen, you know. So I, so I think... Uh, we were accessing our Mahabharat or Ramayana, Mahabharat more so, uh, as story writers, even when we didn't know of Mahabharat or even when we were not uh, specifically, oh, I'm referring to Mahabharat in a more conscious way. Uh, because kisi ne aisa kaha hai ke, aap hi aap hi ne kaha hai, I think. Jo dunia mein hai, wo Mahabharat mein hai, aur jo Mahabharat mein nahi hai, wo dunia mein nahi hai. To, Hero's Journey ka ek class mein hai. To, so, if we are today relying on Mahabharat, I think there is a more structured understanding of Mahabharat, a more conscious understanding of trying to interpret the myths, trying to interpret Arjun's journey, Karan's journey, the, the more specific images, which a lot of our filmmakers, my favorite filmmaker, Raja Mauli sir, has also used a lot of that. So, I think now there is a conscious attempt to use that, but even when we didn't know of it, we were still using it because the way the complexity of emotions plays in Mahabharat is interesting, but the way it has been presented in a more simplified and in a more beautiful way is what is the magic about. What we need to do is, uh, like you talk about a lot of these bigger films, the, the spectacle films, you know, like a Titanic, uh, Avatar, you know. You'll notice one thing that there is no such real, real complexity in the plot. The plot is very, very, uh, for lack of better word, wafer thin. Uh, it's not, but you know, for the popular, this thing. And yet, there is that inherent interesting play of characters in that. So I think uh, as writers, what our uh, challenge today is that we don't have to let go of the complex. We don't have to let go of subtlety. We don't have to let go of uh, nuance. Our art is to present the nuance in, like they were saying, in a more, uh, in a new way in a more simple simple way which can appeal to a wider number of people. So I am absolutely against saying that the lowest common denominator for the lack of better way we use that. But a lot of studio execs also say that we have to dumb this down, dumb this down. I don't yeah. think I don't think we have to dumb our films down. We have to in fact mature as writers so that we don't dump the film down, we don't dumb our emotions down. We find more innovative ways of making our emotions accessible, our characters more accessible. Okay, that's clear enough. Sham, now will you speak at least before the Tamilians <laughs> in this round? Okay. Uh, if one looks at your films, okay, particularly I say I'm referring to Joji because it is uh, one character uh, who is the focus of it. There are elements of a mythical dilemma because he's fighting against a primordial impulse called perhaps greed, which leads to a selfishness, in short, which leads to a heinous act and then the consequences of that act. So there is actually something very mythical about what he goes through. And yet there is a presentation which you do have, which all of us find exquisite absolutely. I mean you heard also in the green room somebody saying, I think one of our students said, I think Avijit said that Joji, my all time favorite. And yet I'm saying the treatment that you have given it okay, is very realistic. Is There is a certain commonplace characterization. Okay? It could be anybody. Okay. So you have humanized him in a way which 
we feel it's very close to us. Any one of us could have felt that. We may not do what he did, but we can understand those feelings. Okay, they don't be big because they don't lead to big actions. If again, it's a question, and forgive me. I mean, it might sound a little clumsy, the question, but I still need to ask you for their sake. If this thing itself, what you adapted from Macbeth, okay, which is a big uh, premise, if you were to increase the appeal of this, do you think that therefore you would have to create a larger than life stake involved here, a larger than life you know, goal, a larger than life consequences which is happening? Is that what would take this material and make it? Thing? Because it has the element of what Pushkar referred to sharply, familiarity and newness, both it has that, because all of us are familiar with that, and yet the specific way in which the story is happening in that context is new. So again, coming down to this rather clumsy question, okay, provocative question, what is pan-Indian? What would it take? Just hypothetically, you wouldn't do it, I know that. So don't put yourself in the shoe, put the film in the shoe and say, what is it hypothetically could be done who knows, maybe the appeal will go across. An ideal pan-Indian cinema I would make is Chota Chatan, something like that. My dear Kutu Chatan, what we made in Malayalam 84, I think. That was the pan first pan-Indian film, a so-called pan-Indian film for Malayalam audience. I would make something like that. No, no, you would. I'm saying uh -huh. if somebody took it up, uh -huh. if Abhijit took it up, took it up, took up Joji and saying, Sham, I think there is big potential in that for a wider footprint. What is it that you think he would have to do? Academically, again. Sir, I really don't know, sir. I have no idea. Yeah, because this, see, even the, what I'm getting at here is we have looked upon the hero's journey as a formula because it's got used like a formula. Hollywood has perfected it to a template, not just a formula. This is how it should go. Studio executives believe that this is the way to make big films, Avatar, Lion King, etc. And thanks to, um, forgetting his name, Christopher uh, Wogler, who wrote that writer's journey, which I'm sorry, but I, I feel that book has done a big disservice actually to mythology. So Aristotle poetics is the same. Aristotle poetics done, is... Done, done. Also, Aristotle poetics at least looks at the principles of that, but the way in which Sidfield and others have interpreted that and turned it into a template, that is my problem with it. As an observation, there is also Natya Shastra, which they wrote. But he didn't say that this is how you should necessarily do it. He said this is how I, these big, great dramas are working. Bharat Muni, if you've heard of, who wrote Natya Shastra, okay, which is the Indian, uh, on, on Indian classical drama, he wrote it, particularly Sanskrit drama. So this, I'm saying Pushkar, if I were to turn to you and say that a story like Joji, okay, which all of us liked, I'm sure you also yep. did, of course, hugely. Again, academically, just fly a kite here. Just shoot or shoot the breeze. Because the base is based on those same human conflicts and human emotions which one can anybody can imagine. Greed, the temptation, okay? Need to take a shortcut, okay? Succumb to your weakness, which is what is, is, is there as a, as a choice. All of us. Some of us may not do it, but when somebody else do it, we does it. We can relate to it. Okay, actually, let's yeah, let's take that idea forward. Uh, okay, just our very little understanding on uh, what works and what doesn't work. Um, the idea of redemption will need to come pretty early in the story. So. I'm going to speak in very, very mainstream terms. Absolutely, please. Okay. That's what so we want. So by the midpoint of the story, by the interval block, uh, your protagonist, if you start him off as having the, let's call it uh, the negative emotions, greed, anger, rage, um, lust, you will have to flip the character by the midpoint. So the second half of the story becomes a a hero protagonist, and hero I'm using here as a person who has a virtuous calling. Yeah, the, according, uh, along the moral axis. Moral axis, so yeah. you flip okay. the moral axis by the midpoint uh, for it to have uh, a resonance with, with a larger audience who don't necessarily think gray characters are consumable. Uh, where uh, people say like gray character is acceptable, um, as uh, film watchers, we know that 
it, you can only push it up to the point. Uh, beyond that point, gray character being completely acceptable is not happening anywhere in the world. It is uh, finally the superheroes are good people. Uh, like you don't make the supervillain, like you make a movie like Joker, one off, still doesn't do the numbers which uh, a Captain America can do. Uh, so somewhere, if we are starting off with this idea, you change the moral axis and make that uh, hero's uh, progression in the second half about trying to redeem for his crime, his, uh, for his negative morality in the first half into the second half. And um, again, now you need to start escalating uh, the, uh, the conflict. The conflict, okay. So, um, for which you will need to create a system over here where um, you have to fight bigger and bigger demons. Uh, so, if the demon cannot be internal. Uh, Actually, I was thinking of, you know, if you say, if you're setting it in a political family. So the stakes become more bigger. Yeah, he's asking how to make a big budget. He's asking how to make a big budget. He's asking how to make a big budget. It's probably necessary, but in such a way that it is seen by like exponentially more people. Yes, sir. If you make a big budget, it will become a big budget, sir. So if Joji has made a big budget, then it will become a big budget. No, no, so what is it? Therefore, it will become pan-Indian. If there's war, there is stakes are high, it's become pan. So but that's actually, what he's saying. So actually, the I have are one high. other thing. Uh, see, what uh, Malayalam has done, uh, like, you know, uh, pan-Indian, no? what they do is like with OTT. Actually, uh, Bharat's films, we are actually reaching a whole bunch. I mean, it doesn't have that spectacle which comes on theater and like, you know, it is celebrated as pan-Indian. But uh, you know, a lot of people have, are very familiar with Fahad's work across uh, the country. So I think their uh, pan-India is like, you know, in a silent pan-India kind of uh, moment is happening with Malayalam. And, um, again, again, these are just ideas with which most studios would be uh, looking at uh, content, you know. Um, one of the things which we have consistently heard is um, the antagonist. Okay, at least now over the past, I think, seven, eight years, um, studios and producers have actually started asking who's the antagonist? What is the hero fighting against? Or who is the hero fighting against? So I think now uh, to make it pan-Indian, since we are trying to define that, is to create an idea that the antagonist is stronger than the protagonist to start off with. Then the hero's journey will follow. You have a protagonist who struggles and then finds that breaking point and then he uh, becomes stronger than the antagonist and defeats the antagonist. So even in the Macbeth uh, world, so I'm not very sure if Macbeth is done as the original text, the Shakespearean text now with the same setting with uh, how Shakespeare wrote it, that kind of setting. I'm not sure that with what we are talking about now, that's a story which will uh, work for the, the, let's call it the pan-Indian market. Uh, why? Because this, uh, uh, the, the stakes don't raise up uh, too much at the end of it, Macbeth. Because but they do actually, he loses the whole kingdom. Uh, which actually, if you look at it, no, it's, uh, it is not enough for now. Losing a kingdom is one, yeah, it's a part of it. <laughs> so, it's literally become no, that. Pushka, what pushka, what happens a, after that? Allow me to uh, Losing a kingdom is nowadays, you know, losing a chapel is become more like conflict kind of stake kind of thing. Yeah, that, that, that is... So, aisa bhi hota hai. Absolutely, that is the way in which you tell the story. That is Sham Pushkaran cinema. That where you take the most ordinary of things and you invest it with so much of emotion and uh, which is, uh, which for is the, the kind of per character yeah. that's like your bicycle thief. It's when a cycle chali gayi hai. Uske andar, you look at the La Poulet, the film where he wants to save a chicken. And so that, of course, absolutely, no doubt about that. But here, <laughs> what I'm turning to, are you saying that because Macbeth ends in a tragedy? where he loses the moral fight and therefore he is destroyed and loses Lady Macbeth and everything goes for a toss. And that is what perhaps people don't want to see today. Yeah, you are can't they, end are they looking that. for heroic stories yeah. where the hero always succeeds? So would a film, the cup, various films that uh, say uh, Mr. Bachchan did, okay, I mean in many of his films he dies. In many of Dilip Kumar's films he dies, okay. 
Divar, Mr. Bachchan dies. In Chole, he dies. In Mukhtar Ka Sikandar, he dies. Okay. Glorious. Ah, uh, Shakti, he dies. So, is it just that, or is it that today those kind of I think we'll things have to won't deal work? with it uh, in this way. See, if you take uh, the uh, the moral arc of the character as one one line which you're following through on your screenplay, and have a different line for the plot, <coughs> so. The hero wins the plot, but his character changes through that process. Right. Okay, so now if you can have the defeat of the moral arc of the character, but not defeat the plot, he needs to win something, and that winning has to be the the plot part of it. What is the plot engine? What what is the actual obstacle? So if it is a disaster movie like Escaping from a Volcano or uh, the San Andreas Fault breaks California apart. He needs to live at the end of it, but he loses something about his character through the process. So this would be that thing which we are all trying to get. Like, how do we still bring the nuance of writers love their lead characters to lose? Okay, that's that's a fact. We love for our lead characters to lose something in the process. Har mai bhi jitne wale kya kehte sir? Har mai bhi jitne wale kya kehte hai? Writer. के भी जीतने वाले को कहते हैं शाम पुष्करन दैट इज एग्जैक्टली हाउ पॉपुलर फॉर्म सीम्स टू वर्क इवन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ लेट यू हैड समी लाइक एन अनुभव सिन्हा ओके हुज मेड एटलीस्ट फोर फिल्म रिलीज बट आई वॉन्ट टू टेक द थ्री ओके इन इज न्यू अवतार दैट इज नॉट दी रावण एंड ऑल दैट विच ही मेड बट हियर दिस डेफिनेटली अ चेंज मुल्क फॉलोड बाय आर्टिकल फिफ्टीन फॉलोड बाय thappad now you look at mulk okay there is a battle that they are fighting which is in the court ke rishi kapoor has to be exonerated from that charge which is based on prejudice that you colluded in that thing you you seen yeah, yeah yeah okay now the theme is prejudice the battle here going on is this so the war is the prejudice which is there in this country the battle is in the court room so he wins that battle but obviously that war still continues because it's not that prejudice has gone away because of this that you look at article 15 he manages to get that criminal who raped and murdered those girls punished but casteism prevails okay casteism which gave rise to this is not going to stop so in that sense what you're saying losing something and winning something seems to be the kind of combination that we have generally followed See, i think um, at least from what uh, we have been observing um, is this is the balance which uh, we as writers will need to find um, because we can't i don't know i mean at least we can't write that story which is completely ra ra success of the human spirit they completely win at the end uh, kinds all our characters are pretty much situated in that very nebulous uh, gray space so how do you achieve that is uh give them both a victory and a loss so that is a way by which you can construct three dimensional characters and going back to the earlier point i think uh, one of the things about um uh, what pan indian would represent is also i think uh, there is going to be a a lot more focus on how you write your lead characters about the lead characters more than the plot i think uh, now one of the the big ideas like a film like pushpa uh i think one of the reasons it works is because of the characterization of pushpa rather than what is the plot of it specifically um okay so that this action of his that footstep of his which is the popular thing on why the character that's a mannerism you mannerism about. what about the personality character okay. now personality uh, i think sir Yeah. Pushpa insults better than all other telugu hero oh. heroes It's damn good insults he comes up with sir okay so, so there like, is a certain yeah no but there is hang on take Yeah, yeah, I know these one-liners sound nice, but there is a lot of merit in what uh, yeah Shyam is talking about. That that is part of it. That aggressiveness, that kind of there is a certain harshness exactly. about him. So he's a hero, but he still has this quality. So, sir, sir, I'm scared, sir. When he's scared, he's scared. 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 amazing way to insult the character the villain or the villain family or something they are finding amazing things to insult me dar gaya sir what is going to happen was terrified what is <laughs> <laughs> then it was only the brand thing okay i got leave yeah. and yeah. fine <laughs> nice okay pushkar I'll, I'll, will you I'll, i'll come back to you yeah. okay i'm going to jump here loss 
And since we did speak about the Mahabharat, and since hero's journey has been a thing here, the Mahabharat, what happens in the Mahabharat? I mean, the final climax, which is 30% of the entire text, 30%, one third of the full story is the war which takes place, 18 days. Clearly, you have the side on the side of Dharma, which is the Pandavas and their army supported by Krishna. On the other side, you have Duryodhana and his Kauravas and all those. Much bigger force, antagonist is bigger, one and a half times, okay, this is seven Akshohinis, that is 11 Akshohinis, bigger. And they win in the end. But look at the loss. Look at the loss of morality, because there's so much of cheating that they have to do along the way. Whether it is killing Karn, killing Duryodhan, killing Bhishma, Dron, Jaidrat, in every which way some trickery. And there is a loss. Plus it's their own brother on the other side, which is a huge emotional loss that you actually ended up killing your elder brother. So this seems to be something that we are familiar with. Yep. Pushkar. Okay. Now, come to this. So is myth, and I don't mean myth as in clearly making VR Chopra's or Raman Sagar's thing, like in the original form. No, 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 no. I'm talking about borrowing the dramaturgical principles which myth borrows from life. And because it's formulated like a story, we borrow from there because it's formulated like a story. But essentially, it's life that we're looking at. So is that it? Is that time come back to, for us to go to basics and look at the basic challenges of life that we are facing and then present it, like Pushkar is saying, in our own way, such that there is newness and there is familiarity. This we are able to relate to. And if you look at Pushpa, it is that. KGF2, unfortunately, I haven't seen, but I believe from whatever I've heard is that. If you look at RRR, you look at Bahubali, those are those basic emotions. So it doesn't, you don't have to follow myth but you have to follow life as does myth. Fundamental challenges, is that what it is? Is that what will unite us as an audience? No, like, yeah, I mean, just continuing from the Pushpa thing is my favorite also. So Pushpa, like everyone, what people took out is Antawazala and that uh, Srivalli and uh, flower nahi fire hai mein, Pushpa samaj ke and uh, Jukega nahi mein. Mm -hmm. Now, Jukega nahi mein is not just a line which works because of the Jukega nahi mein and the attitude and the swag with which he carries. There is a very interesting backstory that they have given to it. Okay, why Jukega nahi mein? So I think it is, it's, it's like the classic Salim Javed writing, that I on its own doesn't work. But when you look at it in the context of how that line has come, how that character has come to say that line, it is, it just sort of defines what Indian cinema is, about, or Hindi cinema is all about. So I think today the challenge is, uh, like, like I said uh, previously also that, how do we make, we, we, we should not let go of the sublime, we should not let go of nuance, we should not go let go of subtlety, but just find newer ways to articulate that. And to answer your question about, about myths, uh, look, I think there's a larger point here. I mean, when you're talking about uh, accessing from the myths, are you also talking about uh, going back in time and because most of the projects that are happening today are also historicals and, and sort of mythologies and stuff like that because I have a point on that as well. Why no, I am not referring to that. In fact, I have a problem with that. And I have a problem with the way in which history is being distorted for a certain kind of agenda. So I am not referring to that at all. I am talking about mythology draws from the fundamental issues, questions that we face in life. That. And that all of us are able to relate it to. Which gives us a perhaps clue that when these issues are actually tackled, there is a simplicity, as Pushkar is saying. There is a, those stakes are high enough. Whatever Absolutely. be those stakes, it can be a chappal. Yeah. Okay, a person sitting here and moderating and can't get a bottle of water, but what does that bottle of water mean to him at that moment? I mean, it is. So, you take anything, but choose those fundamental dilemmas. How far will I go to get this bottle of water? Will I snatch it from Sham? And then the consequences will start. At that. So, creating drama out of very basic issues, rather than trying to be pretentious and saying, no, I'm doing a sophisticated thing and I'm tackling this particular problem, this is the problem I'm tackling. At the base of it, it is simple. No, but why should there be a choice? I mean, why should it be either or? Why can't both be done with a certain honesty with which we access our myths? Or We are done. But we're here we're discussing, unfortunately, the subject which has been given to us is Pan-India. To blame yeah, Jamasar like, for that. I mean, not me. He's like a very, very man. local film like a Kantara. You know, it's a very... It, it's, it's sort of break, broken the, the, the geographical barriers and it has gone on to become what it has become today. Uh, I think the whole point is that if we try to tick too many boxes, if we try to please too many people, we'll please no one. 
we have to first please ourselves we need to have i think somewhere the writers need to resurrect their egos i think unko they need to become gods and they need to believe that if it pleases me honestly it is going to please the people if that we try to please I mean, the people it the is not going to we are the audience i mean we we not we have not come from mars when we write something obviously yeah I but i am my you. first audience i agree with you 100% that it has to appeal to us because if my heart doesn't hurt at the pain of the hero how is somebody else is heart going to hurt no no but because in the the discussions that happen in writers rooms or the with the ex studio execs and sometimes the conversation that we have with our own selves we think ye logo ko acha lagega ya nahi now that is i think fundamentally where we are going wrong logo ko acha lagega ya nahi you see the audience themselves don't know what they want so how can we know what the audience is want See, nobody knows the formula to make. But we try to, to second a, guess, right? Nobody knows the formula to make a successful film. Exactly. But there is a formula for making a Honest flop film. film: is to think you are making a hit film. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, why would I get up at 7:30 and you know sort of do that? Yeah. So yeah, I mean the whole point is to uh, don't make it uh, global. Try to make it local. The local will become global. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Excellent. Sham, now my complete reverse question, which I am going to challenge. Do we really need to look at pan India films? I mean, look at you. Sham, let me let me hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm going to ask you a slightly <laughs> elaborate question. I know you're very eager to uh, uh, give me the answer. <laughs> I know that, but given the and I I mean this literally, the beauty of the storytelling of the films that you have written, whatever small they are, of a fishing village or backwaters, four brothers, etc. Small. and there's so much of human beauty so much of re 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 sort of revelations which come out about human behavior because you observed it perhaps closely felt it closely you have been successfully able to resist the pressure of making it bigger and go beyond etc mallu films have managed to successfully do that none of the other southern regions okay whether it is tamil or telugu they're all he's talking about pan india pan that there is so much of pressure want to do hindi films has been falling on its face trying to do this but they won't give up because then they'll start copying rrr and pushpa and kgf and kantara etc you've been able to resist that okay i want you to answer both things number one as a writer <coughs> what is your ambition as far as the spread of your audience is concerned are you perfectly okay writing that it is seen in kerala it has done this much business this much money thank you very much i am getting my next film people are still willing to work with me is that absolutely okay with you well, we need to reverse that practice of thinking we yeah. have we have we have always been taught to write a scene if ab train chahiye to bus mein bhi likhna abhi zarurat pade to we can change it so we are always in uh, that low budget constraint when we have started writing also when you say we you mean the malayalam writers malayalam film industry yeah. okay so so this is uh, i mean the, the practice of thinking is like that so i need to reverse that thing that needs uh, some more time to see how it going to work so uh, we, i have been practicing writing the big story raising the stakes so i am practicing it ek din aa jayega hum dekhenge <laughs> मतलब एतु ब्रूट आई विल आप भी पैन इंडियन की तरफ जाने लगोगे द पैन इंडियन थिएट्रिकल फिल्म सर द फिल्म्स आर बेसिकली पॉपकॉर्न मस्ती सर आप कुछ भी कहे उसके ऊपर नहीं होना द पैन इंडियन द पैन इंडियन थिएट्रिकल ऑडियंस पॉपकॉर्न खा के आता है आई डोंट लाइक माय फिल्म्स वॉच मेरा मेरा फिल्म देख के आप पॉपकॉर्न खा के मिस्टर खा के खाना खा के मेरा फिल्म देख रहे हो वो मुझे अच्छा नहीं लगता सर so uh this i have to reverse my thinking exactly in the opposite direction to make to serve for that pan theatrical wo samosa ka ke mera film dekhe aur wo i have to reverse my thinking so i'm practicing it within few years i'll reach there and i'll make pan pan theatrical films wo so main practice kar raha hu you're being sarcastic here okay no, 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 yeah, i'm very yeah. sir do you want that that, that is that, is, want that, that is a fun that? thing about ab low budget mein kuch bhi bol dete sarcastic it's low budget only sir you know sarcastic <laughs> you're making such wonderful stuff you have any idea how they stamp out your creativity once these stars etc begin to come in they're the biggest problem in this country you see the disproportionate you know uh, leverage and the anxiety that the star brings in i mean not just raises the budget but also then wants to protect his image and has all kinds of concerns ye nahi karne ka wo nahi karne ka wo nahi karne ka why would you want that sham 
what i uh, you're causing me deep anguish as a fan <laughs> sir so, kya bol so i was just uh, while you were asking no sir i just get the feeling like i'm watching a youtube video and i forget the question nahi nahi mai to sirf ye keh raha tha ki one of the issues which we are definitely we have been facing in uh, bombay the bombay film industry is that the stars have an enormous amount of decision making power and they are very concerned with their image with their careers with their so called um, you know um, uh, fans and their money so as a result of which when you take an original piece of work if it doesn't fit into what he believes he should be doing then they begin to change it and everybody else from the producer the financer the platform the writer director everybody succumbs to that this disproportionate monstrous power which they have so i'm saying going pan indian could also entail this making a popcorn movie also entail that this is the pain that we have to fight and some of us lose and some of us sort of negotiate and compromise and that's how it's been going on here yes i'm saying that the popcorn movies are more painful to make that's why we are saying why do you want that. that pain no i don't want it i mean i don't mind once in a while i'm doing it to, to just to make ourselves like ha ah, main wo bhi kar sakta hu bas ah, okay, for that sake only One, to do only one, one okay? Promise. Mar jayega sir. Mar jayega. Ab three years, four years, one movie pe khaj kiya to mar jayega. Mar jayega na? Ha. Correct. We have to work n number of cigarettes to make it going through that painful process each and every day. Mera utna. I'm not that aged. Look at look at my. I'm 84 born, but look at my thirty sir. <laughs> this is this enormous amount of pain we are going through. As it's it a, it's the handmade industry we all have to sit together and make this coconut shell thing <laughs> so it's the uh, that that pain is there so it is our uh, now being in the film industry for last 12 years i have learned that dieting is also important health is also important and we have to <laughs> be st- out of stress and to write, to write good and make films good so yeah but also for good health sham good diet is important and popcorn is bad for health popcorn is okay, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> samosa is bad for today you go to watch a movie in those multiplexes they come to take orders i mean the picture dekhne aaya hai ke restaurant mein aaya hai ke bar mein aaya kal savere daru bhi dega wo wo aapko bitha ke fir kuch roll karke dega you know ke ha ha aaram se baitho yaar matlab picture dekhne aaya hai yaar मतलब ये क्या कर रहा है बीच में आगे वो ऑर्डर ले रहा है वो ऑर्डर दे रहा है मेन्यू बताओ व्हाट्सएप पे भेजा है सो आई एग्री विथ यू आई मीन इट इज पेनफुल आई एम ओल्ड फैशन दैट वे इट्स नॉट अ पिकनिक यू आर वाचिंग अ मूवी यू आर लिसनिंग टू अ स्टोरी यू नो आई कांट इवन इफ आई एम टेलिंग अ स्टोरी टू माय सन इफ ही स्टार्टेड डूइंग अदर थिंग्स प्लेइंग विद माय या या पॉप्स गॉन आई एम प्लेइंग विद दिस नो थैंक यू वेरी मच आई एम नॉट टेलिंग यू द स्टोरी क्यू करेक्ट the server was telling me an exciting story while we were sitting there once the person start talking like here and sir immediately stopped that and he was telling a very personal very important story to me yeah and he suddenly he stopped and, um, i think he can't concentrate on two things i think he can make it up he, he is very focused person he is so as a logo ko i feel like we need, i need demand total attention sir so exactly when you say sir you are referring to vijayendra prasad or zama yeah. vijayendra prasad oh, okay fine yeah okay uh vijayendra sir time has come for me uh, one of the volunteers please can you carry this mic to vijendra sahab aap aaoge aaiye hello sir everyone sir bagal mein kuch hai 2 seconds 2 second ke liye baithiye bagal mein aaiye na kya ask the question i'll answer itne ziddi kab se ban gaye aap ha pehle to nahi the aise ha nahi chalo Okay, uh, question which obviously is there in most people's minds, and now that they've got you, let me articulate it for them. All the recent films that you have done, they have been true to the world of their story. They have been in the language in which you wrote it, and I imagine the story is true to what you wrote, and yet they created waves across. everybody else has been trying this and by and large not by and large not able to succeed what is it that your approach is when you're writing uh, hello everyone 
Sometimes access do happen. Sir, tell us a little bit. So, that's the amount of accidents. Three or four accidents don't happen. Okay, sir. Sometime back, I read a quote of Albert Einstein. The more the personal, the more the universal. The more the personal, the more the universal. At that time, I could not comprehend the meaning of it when it, it is applied to the movies. I'm a big fan of Mel Gibson, me and my son also. We have seen Passion of Christ. It is done in Arabic language, which is dead 2,000 years back. And then we made Apocalypto. I don't know, God alone knows how many people still speak that language. Then I started questioning myself, why he did that language? Why couldn't he do it in English? Then it struck me. He wanted to take the audience to that era in honesty. Then I understood the meaning. The more the personal, the more the universal. So first of all, we write a story which satisfy, satisfies you, honestly. <coughs> Forget about pan India. You write a picture which is going to satisfy your soul, your mind. Manasa vacha karmana, they say, no? Manasa vacha karmana. It should satisfy you. When it satisfies you, it is going to satisfy the entire world. That's the soul. That's the soul of making a pan-Indian story. The second thing is, give spectacle, which nobody has seen till now. The soul should not be diluted or polluted at any moment. And then give a spectacle to it, which will appeal. Oh, wow. We should be seen on the big screen. We are not seen till now. This is the formula, sir. Let me what ask you, when you are writing it, how do you factor in the, when you are writing the story, how do you factor in the spectacle? Yes, sir. When you are writing the story, ah. how do you factor in the spectacle? To, okay, this is going to be big. Or do you leave it to the director? I again have been mentioning all the way about two great pan-Indian stories. You have been constantly referring to great pan-Indian stories, Ramayana and Mahabharata. Lift from them, steal. No, no, I don't mean that. I'm saying, do you describe the spe spectacle? Do you believe that this particular fight taking place between these two characters is going to be spectacular? Is that during the script itself? That's what I'm asking. Yes, yes of course. The, the script ah, itself, yeah. we have to do it. Yes, script yeah. itself. Ah, okay. Well, you don't leave it to the director that, okay, how ah, do you no. want to treat it? No, Big, no, no, small? No, 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 no. It's part and parcel of the evolution of the script. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Everything is written down before going to the sets. I have put answers. Sure. You want to sit? You want to go? What do you want to do? Huh? <laughs> then, while you're standing, let me throw another question. Thank you. No, no, hang on, hang on. Don't go. Let me throw another question at you. I mean, at least answer two. Okay. And then please come later for the photograph. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Pushkar? Yeah. We need to... Uh, how much time uh, do we have, Zama? Fifteen minutes we have. Uh, have questions been received? You sent it to me? Okay, I'll have a look at that. So, one last thing, Pushkar. What I asked him. Should we be actually, as creative people, writers, directors, writer, writer, director, writer, be actually pushing for the non- so-called pan-Indian thing. Why should we be doing that? Why should we have make right stories and make films which necessarily have a footprint across yeah. India? There are people doing that. They know how to do it. Let them do it. Some of them, like Antara, may accidentally become that. One of us may accidentally become that. Okay, But we don't need to necessarily aim for that. So in which case, more and more scripts if they come out dealing with specific issues, local issues, more relatable treatment, with whatever big stakes they may be, but it doesn't have to be large, then in which case even budget-wise, even in terms of its appeal, the authenticity, it being true to the story and the feelings of the story, it actually might have more impact. And cinema will proliferate. I mean, all these people sitting here don't have to necessarily wait in line to think of that big budget that will appeal to a studio. There can be many more films made for every one huge um, Brahmastra or a Shamshera, 
Maybe about 20 films can be made. So should we be pushing for that? And I'm asking you specifically as filmmakers who are also big filmmakers. Actually, uh, no, no, sorry, Nicholas. I think, uh, see, one thing is if you want to go theatrical, way forward, I mean, honestly speaking, I mean, uh, like this year is Tamil has been good, theatrically it's been good. But going forward, I mean, uh, which has happened already in Hollywood, unless it is uh, of certain scale and spectacle, no, you may not attract audiences. So I'm not saying you shouldn't be doing uh, like, you know, intimate stories and all that, but then you should uh, be kind of okay with the idea that people will watch it at home. Because I think going forward, that is actually going to be the reality. I mean, there is uh, no two yeah, ways uh, about it. I think uh, see, this is uh, the winds which have been blowing for quite some time since uh, the, the OTT uh, space came into India five, six years back. Uh, and internationally, we have seen that uh, the shift of certain kind of storytelling will happen to larger and larger screens at home. So it's all kind of the same. I mean, now a 55-inch, 65-inch TV is affordable, and now you have a lot more good content to see. So the ecosystem itself is kind of changing. Who's getting uh, uh, lost in this whole thing is the theatrical. Uh, so storytelling will live. I mean, if you want to write a movie, uh, or make a movie, you will find your audience. But you can't be sure if it's going to be theatrical or uh, in television or OTT or whatever new technology comes, or uh, uh, it could be on YouTube or it could be on VR. We don't know. Specifically theatrical means like what Sir said, there is the, the need for a spectacle for somebody to spend that money to go to a theater and watch. See, this itself is not something, actually, a couple of days back, uh, we were talking about this to uh, our, uh, somebody who was pitching a script to us. So what we have seen happen is, once the big films start working, which will attract the people to come back into the theaters kinds. So during the pandemic, we all know there has been a little loss of that habit of coming to the theaters. The big films need to start working now. Then the mid-level films will start working. And when the mid-level films start working, the next step would be that the smaller intimate films will also start working in the theaters. We saw this happen in Tamil in 2010, 2011, again in 2014, 15, in 2017, 18, it happened. The in-between years, it didn't happen. Right now, Tamil is going through that. We had a film like Mast, uh, uh, sorry, Vikram with Kamala Hassan, which was a big film, which worked. We had a Vijay Ajit film earlier, which kind of did okay. Uh, towards the post-summer, the, the medium budget films have started working. The, uh, the ones with uh, uh, the mid-level stars have started working. So now everybody is positive about, say, by mid of next year, the small films will actually have a theatrical run. Right now, no. For the next one month, no. Next two months, no. But post-February, March, people are actually hopeful of that cycle always happening. And if we look back, that has always been the cycle in India. Big films work, then mid films work, and then small films work. When the big films start failing, then down the line, everything fails. So as an industry, we should always be cognizant of the fact that you need those tentpole marquee films to do well in theaters for the whole ecosystem to survive. Now it is being called a pan-India film, right? So we need that big film which will say, yes, let's go to the theaters. I really love this. Let's see what else is there in the theaters. I love this too. Let's go back to the theater and see that small film. Maybe I'll be kicked by it. But once the big films start failing, and we as an industry don't try to figure out how to make the big films work, then we are actually destroying the theatrical space. So it's essential that some people do pan-Indian films well, and we need to encourage writers who are going to write that. Um, because I think ultimately that is the most difficult writing. Um, writing a personal story, something which we are really kicked about. No, it will flow because ideas will flow because it's very, you're closely intertwined with that idea and there is a part of your soul in it. But how do you translate that to a big budget film? And now the responsibility is the big budget film needs to work because you need to make that small film. So we are in that space where we need to do this big film so we can still do a small film. Now, if you don't do the big film and get it to work, we might never be able to do the small film for a theatrical audience. We'll still be able to do it for OTT. So that is where the dichotomy is. Uh, yes, we would do big films. Uh, and um, there is a need for it. 
there is an absolute mm, need for a pan India film. Can makes I just come sense, in? Uh, makes sense. One, one point I want to make. Please. Uh, so, like, just talking about the big films and what can writers do to sort of enable themselves to be able to do big films. So, it's very easy to say that a star aya to big film. Hai. But I think what writers can, looking forward to, uh, looking back at what are the films that have worked and whatever films that are working even in Hollywood, what is that one thing that we have been as a community missing out on? And I think that which the Hollywood has been doing very well, which uh, Rajamali sir does it well, uh, Vijayendra Prasad sir also, is the whole concept of universe building. Concept universe building. Universe building. We, and I, this is not to say that we don't do what we do, we don't do what we do, but point is, they build some beautiful universes, they create their own time, they create their own space, and they create their own memories. So that interplay of time, space, and memories, ke ek avtar jab unhone bana le, now when Avatar is going to release, the most business is going to do is from India. We were discussing yesterday. Why? Because who are these characters? We don't know. What language they speak English? Maybe in that tuta puta Hindi they are going to, and other languages they are going to. But yet we are going to give them a 40 crore opening on first day. 40 crores on first day. On basis of what? Because of promise of an experience. We are talking about spectacle. Go one step beyond and say that let's give people an experience. The only two films that have worked this year in Hindi, uh, Brahmastra, because it also promised a certain spectacle. But you know which was the first film that worked this year? Was Bhul Bhulaiya. No, Bhul Bhulaiya mein aisa spectacle kuch nahi tha. But point is it promised that I will be able to come to the theater, pay 400 rupees and laugh with 500 people. So, you know, looking at theater as a collective viewing thing, Somewhere the writers also need to sort of build their own universes and uh, create that spectacle and a promise of an experience. Okay. And, and, and yeah, one last thing. Uh, even the small films are pan-India films today, by the way, because the de demand from the OTT is that you write a film, likho, because you know, when I make a film in Marathi or a film in Malayalam, when it comes on OTT, and largely it is going to become an OTT-funded economy, the smaller films. Their demand is that how can you make it more pan? Badi film mein pan honi chahiye, but choti film mein bhi pan honi chahiye. Because they want to dub it in other languages. Even the shows, it's actually a conversation that I've had with the studio where they're saying that even your shows, your series, have to be pan India. True. Uh, okay. I think it's been a more challenging session to fully grasp, so there actually are no questions. I'm going to leave you with one... Uh, account. Recently we had gone to uh, Copenhagen for the meeting of all the guilds of the world, writers associations. So the Americans as well as the Europeans and the uh, Israelis and the New Zealand people, these people, big mature filmmaking countries, they actually, Pushkar, believed that the market for small films, middle films, etc., is over. It's only the Marvel and that other whatever, DC or whatever it is that they call it. Only those kind of superhero spectacular films will be made, which interestingly is, seems to be like almost like a counter to what you're saying, though I tend to believe what you're saying, that in India there is still a lot of potential left for smaller films, middle level films to actually come out, and we like the theater going experience because we all go together and watch it. Whereas there, they, they feel it's been stamped out completely, that it's not coming back. In fact, when we were discussing the contracts, there was no film contract being discussed at all. It was only the streaming contracts, which is the shows for showrunners, etc. They're not even discussing contracts right now in the thing, only for that. Whereas when we mentioned, I mean, Zama, Mitesh and I had gone there, that we still have these hundreds of films, which are, people have come back after the pandemic to watch this. They were genuinely taken aback with this case. Really, in India, it's still going on. It's, yeah, yeah, people are still, there is still a lot of them left in theater. So I, 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 in fact, will go with what your prediction is, that if these tentpole films do well, people will come back to the culture of viewing in cinema halls, and then, yes, the smaller films, etc., will start coming out, and then we are hoping that what he's saying is right, that even films like Kumbhalangi Nights and Joji and will come to our theatres and be genuinely called Pan-India. Adding up to this, what Pushkar said, I left the theatre movie for watching. And once I went to this James Bond movie and very fascinated, I was missing this theatre experience. Why don't I often come? That big films can do that to you. 
like to, to to make that theater experience high so big films we need big films to ensure about the theater experience yeah, so that we seem to be agreeing with okay as i said that there may not be any very uh, complete or pat or clear answers here but certainly it is some insights have come through as they are saying uh, one is of course it's important for us to focus on what appeals to us number two on the simplicity of the story and at the same time the inventiveness of the way in which you present it which is unique to you number three what uh, pushkar and uh, spoke and what all of us agreed that perhaps we should actually be encouraging big films to come out only to start the whole stream of returning to the theaters again in which case there will be other films which will get the chance because in, if you have 52 weeks if you take the case of say the bombay film industry which is what i'm most familiar with you don't have 52 spectaculars coming out every year you can't have 52 bahubalis and 52 kgf2s coming out so there will be there will be 5 6 7 8 9 10 12 40 other films are still waiting and multiple releases also take place here so we hope that that is likely to happen Okay, because even today when these people write, when we write, we don't write thinking of the OTT screen. You see, all of you, I'm sure even, uh, you know, you also don't. I mean, when you're writing, you're obviously imagining people look in the dark theater watching that. And I think that should continue. It should continue to, you know, uh, motivate us. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, all four of you, for being patient. तुम लोग है ना बोलने नहीं देते वो ओके अभी तो मैंने पूरा थैंक यू किया भी नहीं है और तुम लोगों ने ताली बजाना शुरू कर दिया मैं कहा थैंक यू बोल रहा हूँ ऑल्सो फॉर द पेशेंस विच यू हैव शोन एंड दी सिंसियर अटेम्प्ट टू ग्रैपल विद दीज क्वेश्चन विच मे रियली नॉट बी समथिंग विच डॉग्स यू बट नेवर दिल सिंस जमा सर हैज एक्चुअली कॉइंट दिस एंड थ्रोन एस इन टू इट सो वी ट्राई टू डू एज स्टूडियस एंड सिंसियर अ जॉब एज वी कुड सो थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर that thank you sham